Hey there, it's Rachel from All About The House. In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the budgeting spreadsheet. So I used to track income and expenses and savings and all that sort of financial stuff on pen and paper. Then I switched to editable PDF format, but then I really wanted something that would automatically calculate totals for me. So I went to Excel. So I previously created spreadsheets for tracking income, expenses, tax deductions, etc. for my business, and that worked really well in Excel. So I decided to create similar spreadsheets for my personal spending. So if you did want these spreadsheets, I'll include the link below to where they can be purchased from my Etsy shop. So I'll just do a walkthrough of how they work. So when you download the files, they'll be blank like this. The formulas are already set up for you. So all you need to do is type in your numbers and then all the formulas will automatically calculate. So all your totals and the graphs will automatically update as well. So these spreadsheets will be blank. Um, I've done up an example one though to show you how they work to give you a bit of a better idea. And there's also some instructions as well. I've got a tax deductions checklist that you can download from my blog if you are interested. And then there's also a PDF um, worksheet as well, which has instructions on how to use Excel if you haven't used it before. These spreadsheets will also work in Google Docs, and I believe they'll work in Numbers for Mac, although I don't have a Mac, so I can't be like 100% certain that they will, but I'm assuming that they will. Okay, so the annual summary is basically a snapshot of where your finances sit, so you can track your goal income and your actual, same with your expenses, and then you can see the balance of where you're currently sitting financially, and you can do that for each month. So all you need to do is enter in your goals, and the actual income will automatically be pulled from this spreadsheet here. So when this has been populated, it will um, produce this graph for you. So you can compare your goal income with your actual. So if you prefer to look at numbers, then you can just look at it in the table up here. But if you like a visual representation, then this graph will do it for you. So you can see that there was quite a bit of a difference here in January. Um, the other thing that I like to point out is that you can write over the top of cells. So if you want to work off the financial year for the country that you live in, so I live in Australia, our financial year starts in July, so if you wanted it to be financial year rather than calendar year, you can just type over the top of these and put in whatever months you want it to start in. So if you live in the US, where I believe their tax year is like around April or something weird like that, you can change the months to suit that as well. So you've just got one Excel file for your financial year. So then in this tab here, this is where the main uh, spreadsheet that you'll be using, so the income and expenses. So again, you can just overwrite these up the top here. You would just do it once and then copy it down to all the rest of the um, sections as well, the income, expenses, etc. So this is set up that you could use it for just yourself if you are just tracking your own expenses and income and also if you have a family. So if you've got yourself and your husband or your life partner, um, then you can track your own income and their income as well. Or if, like me, you have um, an Etsy shop and then you also have a day job, you could have your income one as day job, income two as your side hustle. So you can track everything all in the one spreadsheet. And again, you can type over the top of these cells as well. So if you dabble on eBay, you can just type straight over the top and create that category. You can also add new cells as well. So if you've got money coming in from here, there and everywhere, and you need more than these four um, categories, you can create a new cell. So you just click here, right click and go insert and it'll add a line above. When you do this, just make sure that you check the formulas. So for example, there's no formula here, so you want to just go Control D and it will copy it down for you. And same with the average as well. And you'll just want to check that these totals, yes, they're still including that line. So make sure you just check the formulas if you're going to be adding um, and deleting lines because they have already been set up. So just double check um, and make sure that you copy down the formulas when you add new cells to make sure it's giving you an accurate um, representation. So you can type in uh, whatever figures that you want. I've just done round figures to make it clearer, but you can do decimal places if you want to. So if you want to go 1250. If you don't want to see decimals, you just want to see round numbers, you click this button up here and it will just put it into a whole number for you. Um, the other things that I wanted to mention, um, if you want to quickly check if formulas are working, you can just click in that cell and hit F2 and it'll show you what cells it's calculating off. And then it will also do the average for you automatically. So I like to use averages for each month to keep track of like which months have higher spending. So I know when to forecast if I am receive more income. So I sell planners on Etsy and I know that in January I make more money because that's when it's popular. So then I can see, okay, I've got more taxes that I'm going to have to pay that, that uh, month. So it helps for forecasting. I find when you've got the average 
Um, so that's what this column here will do automatically for you. The formula is set up that it will pull the average for you so you don't need to touch that at all. Um, it will automatically do it for you. Yay, I love automatic calculations. Okay, so income two is the same thing. And then in total income, it will automatically total them up for you so you don't have to sit there and manually calculate it yourself. And same deal will give you an average as well for each month. So then we go into expenses. So I've done up main spending categories here, but you can always override them. You just click on the text. So if you don't have kids, you can change that to whatever type of category that you want, or you could delete the line altogether if you wanted to. You just right click here, and instead of hitting insert like we did last time, you just hit delete. Um, and when you delete it, it won't mess up the formula, so it's all good. Okay, so, um, and just press Control Z to undo if you accidentally make a mistake. So again, you just enter in all your totals. Now, this spreadsheet is designed that you just do a running total for your expenses, income, everything. So if you've got multiple subscriptions per month, for example, let's say you spent 20 bucks on one and 40 on another, you would just go equals 20 and then plus 40. So what I do each week is I gather up all my receipts from my spending and I log on to my internet banking and then I enter in all of the money that I've spent. So let's say I had another subscription, you just click in that box, go up here and go plus and enter in the new one. So it just keeps a running total. So if you don't need to keep a breakdown of all your expenses in minute detail, like, you know, you don't really care about how much you spend on groceries, you can just enter in the total for the month, then that's what this running total is for. And if you wanted to then calculate your weekly expenses, you can always do that as well. But I prefer to work off a monthly basis. I find weekly you get bogged down in the details a bit too much. So that's um, how you enter in the running totals. You can come back at any point during the month. You don't have to enter in all at once and you can just keep adding to it as you keep spending money. So you go like plus 20, etc. So I'm sure you get the idea. So then again, it will total the expenses for you automatically with all of your different categories. You can type over them if you want different ones as well. And again, it'll calculate the average for you so you can help with forecasting um, and budgeting. So next up we have debts. So I've included common debts here, but again, you can add your own. So we've got mortgage, credit cards, student loans, car loans, personal loans, and taxes. So in here, you can enter in how, many, how much taxes you've paid, so again, for forecasting as well. If you've got a side hustle, then this is a really good um, section to make sure that you update. Now, savings goal. So in here, you would enter in your actual savings. There is a separate spreadsheet, which I'll get to in a minute, um, where you can compare your um, actual versus your goal. So in here, you record your actual, and you can type over the top of these as well. Um, they're linked to this tab here, so it'll automatically update. So again, you just do a running total. So if you save 20 bucks, 50 bucks one week, 20 bucks another week, you just do a running total and it'll automatically add it up for you. Okay, so this here is linked to the savings tracker. So this is another spreadsheet. So in here, if you don't want it to say savings goal, you can actually type in what your goal will be. So if you're saving up for a new car, you would just type that in here, come back to income and expenses and it's automatically updated over here. You'll also notice January has $70 for your actual savings and it'll automatically transfer to this spreadsheet here um, all your actuals for each of your savings goals. So you can record up to three savings goals. If you don't need three, you just wouldn't enter in anything in these cells here. Okay, so you only need to enter in your goals in this tab. The actuals will feed through from this spreadsheet. Again, you can update the months as well if you prefer to work off the financial year for the country that you live in. You can also record any notes as well. So if you had pretty much no savings for one month, you could put an explanation that, you know, you went on holidays so you didn't have any money to set aside, just any other notes that you like. And again, this graph will automatically um, show up for you. It'll automatically pull the figures from this table here if you want a visual representation. So you could see that your goal was 400 and you only managed this much. So you know when to put in more savings if you want to actually achieve your goal. And I find a visual representation um, is really helpful. The other spreadsheet is the tax deductions one. So if you do need to keep some details of your expenses come tax time, um, obviously you don't want to get bogged down in the details in this spreadsheet. This is like a summary, but within these categories, you may have some tax deductions. For example, um, if you've got uh, work uniforms, so you could put the you would put the total in here of your uniforms, but then you would want to keep that separate so that you have a record of it come tax time. So you would just type in the category, the expense, the date, and then the cost. So I've split this out into person one and person two. So similar with the income one, income two, you can rename these if you want. So if you wanted this one to be me, you wanted this one to say husband, 
you can do it that way and override the cells, uh, the text in the cell if you prefer to have your own categories. Um, and then you can track who has what deductions. And then at the end of the year, you can filter it. Um, and then you'll get your totals ready for your accountant. The other thing that I like to do is to keep track of when I've filed the actual receipt. So sometimes the receipt might be a digital copy rather than a paper copy. And if I don't have this column here, then I'd forget to file it. And it's really annoying at the end of the year when you're trying to go through all your emails and find that receipt. So this is a really good way to check that you have filed it. And then I just put a Y, just type that in there, when it has been filed and then any general notes that you like. So if I'm buying things online, I always like to record when they were actually delivered. Sometimes parcels can go missing, especially if they're international. So if you had a whole bunch of deductions in here, I'll just show you how the filter works. So the filter is these little triangle things here. So let's say that you had more work uniforms that you brought and you brought these in May and they were like 200 bucks and your husband's expense and you haven't filed the receipt. So you would obviously have a lot more deductions here. You could have um, mileage, any other deductions. I've got that checklist again. I'll include that link below on my blog if you wanted to download it so you don't uh, miss out on any. So you can filter these categories. So if you click this button here, it'll show it with all the categories that you have. At the moment, we only have work, so if I've got that one ticked and hit OK, it'll only show those work ones. But let's say that you had um, like a personal expense and you had some stationery. Gotta love stationery. I am a massive stationery fan. And let's go 20 bucks. Okay, so you would have multiple categories here. Let's say you only wanted to see the work ones. You untick select all and only tick work, and it'll only show those um, expenses. So within work, if you had uniforms, mileage, etc., you can filter it again in this cell here. If you want to unfilter it, you just go, this will show that it's being filtered rather than a triangle. That means filtered. You can turn them all back on and see them all at once. If you wanted to check that you filed the receipt, you would unfilter and just choose blanks. So that tells me that you've got two um, deductions that you have not filed a receipt for. So you know to go and check that. You could also file um, filter it by person. So if you only wanted to see your own deductions, if you are doing your taxes at the moment, then you can just filter it to see only yours and it will filter out um, your husband's. You could filter it by month if you wanted to, so it will automatically do it for you there. So let's say you want to see May and it will get rid of the other ones, so you only need to see that. So the per uh, perks or benefits of being able to filter it just makes it so much clearer. You don't have to keep multiple spreadsheets for multiple people, you can keep it all in the same one and it also helps for totaling. So if you're only tracking your um, me Sorry, you want to untick all of that and just tick the ones that have your dollars in it so it gets rid of the husband column and then you can go, okay, I've spent $320 on deductions. So again, it helps for tax forecasting. Anywho, so that's how filters work. You can also enter in the year up the top here if you want to. Um, and then these little red triangles here, if you hover over it, it gives you instructions as well. So you don't have to come back and watch this video again if you don't want to. It'll have little tips in there which you just hover your mouse over and it'll give you instructions on what to put where. Now, I do recommend that you save a blank copy of the spreadsheets because you can reuse them year after year. So saving a blank copy means you don't have to delete out all your dollars um, or accidentally override something. Just keep a blank copy that you can keep using year after year for all of your expense tracking. Um, that's pretty much it for these spreadsheets of what I wanted to go through. If you do have any questions, just shoot me an email. My email address is allabouttheHouseEtsy at gmail.com and I'll include um, this video within the download as well if you did want to come back and refer to it later and don't forget there's also the instructions PDF as well if you do get stuck. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll include the links below that have been mentioned throughout this video and don't forget to go and check out that tax deductions checklist. It's a free printable on my blog. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for, to my YouTube channel. I do lots of planner related graphic design, a bit of um, online business stuff as well. So don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in videos like that. Thanks for watching. Bye.